Hi, if you're wondering why this video looks a bit different, it's because I don't have my studio lights turned on. Both these Aperture Amaran lights, I usually have uh, two of these either side of me to light up the mailbag or light up the bench that I'm actually uh, working on. And these are uh, very nice quality, uh, high color rendering index studio lights. Absolutely fantastic at a fixed color temperature. If you don't know, all of my lights in my lab here are a matched color temperature so that least reasonably accurate colors in my videos. So not only do I have two of these, I've got an array of overhead studio lights above the uh, bench as well, which are those uh, square panel lights. And I recently had uh, all of the lights in this new lab changed under a New South Wales government scheme where they will replace your original trougher lights, which are the tubes. In fact, these ones are actually LEDs, but uh, anyway, fluoro tube light uh, troughers up there with these um, newfangled LED panel lights. They just drop in and the government will do it for almost free. I had to pay a little bit of uh, cost or whatever, but it's heavily government subsidized and uh, they uh, replace them. I, now, I actually uh, tested the panels that they were going to install before they I uh, signed up to this thing to have them replaced. And I checked the color temperature and they were the correct color temperature. Shouldn't care about CRI because I have uh, higher quality studio lights that uh, give better quality light for that. So it's not a problem. So this is just for not shooting video, uh, just for general lab use. Unfortunately, the problem is I didn't check out the drivers for the thing. And it turns out you can probably see it here in this video. There is flicker. You should be able to see some sort of little horrible shimmery flickery thing here. It's really awful. And it's even worse if you use a webcam. So on the left hand side here that you're watching, this is my regular webcam. This is actually, it's not a webcam, it's my old Canon HFM 400. It's just a little um, old Canon uh, camcorder and it's quite good. I do that via uh, HDMI video capture. And on the right hand side is the Logitech C922 webcam, one of the best webcams on the market. Now I took down the uh, offending panel and it might look okay at the moment but let's have a look let's have a look whoa look at the webcam look at the webcam look at that <laughs> that's terrible muriel wow look at that so the, so the camcorder handles it okay but it definitely shows up on the logitech uh, webcam uh, camcorders and these webcams you can actually enable the uh, 50 60 Hertz uh, anti flicker mode and I've got that enabled and I don't get this flickering problem with my other uh, panel studio lights I've got or of course with uh, these uh, professional studio lights as well so what's the problem well let's investigate now it's obviously not going to be the panels themselves because the panels are just LEDs. There's no active driver circuitry inside here. So it's clearly going to be the driver that's the problem here. And both of these are SunLED Energy brand. It turns out that this is an Australian company not too far from here. So they've just rebadged uh, some one hung low brand in uh, China, put their own model number on it. Because if you search for this model number and the model number of the driver down here, all you get is some New South Wales government database thing. So um, yeah, clearly they've just bulk bought these and rebadged them. So I think this puppy here is going to be the cheapest possible thing. And that's why it's flipper, flickering. Flip, flippering? I think we'll run with flippering. So like I said, there's absolutely no data on this. These are only uh, like 24 watt panels, so they're not particularly bright. The uh, overhead studio panel lights that I've got in here from my old lab, they're actually uh, 60 watts a piece. And you can see, you can see the new ones flickering over there. I can't see these flickering in uh, real life, but it might eventually be bad on the eyes. But anyway, this driver here is gonna be as dodgy as, and I've taken off the end caps here and it looks like they're just soldered directly on even the mains input soldered directly on that's a bit how you're doing they've got the holes in the case for the uh, screw terminals down in there but they don't use them Jeez, not off to a good start well there's your problem now whilst it might look you know fairly neat and tidy the simplicity 
is the issue here. The uh, primary side here, nothing essentially wrong here. We've got an input uh, fuse that's just flapping around in the breeze a little bit, but it's okay. We've got ourselves a common mode choke and some filtering, so, you know, that's okay. But it's, and it's going directly into this uh, primary side switcher chip here. And, well, therein lies the problem. There's nothing else. Look at the secondary side. There should be a little bit more on the bottom here. Of course, you know, single-sided. This isn't even FR4. This is like phenolic base. It's a bit how you're doing. They're saving uh, some costs there. But anyway, we've just got a few uh, PAFSIs around here. PAFSIs? Jeez, I'm not doing very well today, am I? Anyway, this is all primary side stuff and this is all secondary side stuff they've got the high voltage uh, isolation slot there so that's all okay right but the problem is the secondary side there's our uh, there's our diode but secondary side is so simplistic there is no a uh, traditional like a uh, regulation on the secondary side there is no opto coupler feedback to the primary side so how are they actually regulating this constant current because this is a constant current driver it's 500 to 550 milliamps constant current anyway there's no way that they're doing secondary regular current constant current regulation there it's a primary side regulation function so this transformer they're gonna have to be getting a tap back on the transformer if we have a look on the bottom there you go there's your there's one winding that's the switching winding and this would be your feedback winding here the reason that they're doing that is because it lowers the cost you don't need any secondary side uh, regulator uh, IC you don't need any opto coupler that's why you're almost certainly going to get flicker on the output it depends on the uh, type and size of your output uh, cap of you know how much you're actually going to get and if that's just a one hung lowy is it well at least it's 105 degree rated and there's nothing inherently wrong with having uh, transformer feedback instead of like opto coupler feedback or whatever that's actually uh, fine the problem with this is is that it has no secondary side current, constant current regulation. And they've got a, a piss weak amount of uh, output filtering as well. So yeah, they've really uh, cut costs on this. That's why you're going to get a metric crap ton of ripple and hence flicker on this thing. And unfortunately, these model numbers here are not telling me anything. I get diddly squat searching for that. But look, they tell you what type of material is the Chem 1. So the best we can do is look at the data sheet for this puppy. It's almost certainly, uh, you know, directly pulled uh, from the data sheet or uh, app note. First of all, I'm just curious to know what... Uh the compliance voltage of the LEDs happens to be there. 38 volts, of course, that will depend upon the number of LED, uh, LEDs you've got in the string, the type of LEDs, the drive current, and the voltage drop, the configuration, all inside uh, there, but yeah. And if I use my AMTTI 520i probe here with the, uh, the toroid attachment and put it in uh, wire mode, uh, there's our current waveform. It's jumping around like a jack in the box. Let's fix that trigger in. That's maybe some noise rejection. There you go. Bob's your uncle. So it's mostly 100 hertz ripple there because it's full wave uh, rectified. That's why your 50, 60 hertz uh, anti-flicker filter on your uh, webcam is, is typically not working and of course if you get that flicker on your regular uh, camera then your depends on the frame rate you're shooting at and all that sort of stuff and the beat frequencies as to how it uh, actually flickers so that magnitude there two volts that means nothing because I haven't current scaled it to match what this thing is so what you've got to do is look up your manual and in wire mode with toroidal attachment uh, one amp per output volt. So I've got to set that back to one to one probe and 240 millivolts equals 240 milliamps. But of course if you want to do it nicely you can actually change that to amps. So it's now 240 milliamps it's now scaling in milliamps nice most digital scopes will have uh, the feature to change the units and the scaling in, in this case you can see uh, one volt per amp here it's just nice to set it up like that just so you don't mentally goof it and if you want to see the voltage waveform I'm just probing that and yes it is safe because the secondary side is a transformer isolated I've done a whole video on that how not to blow up your scope and uh, 10 volts per division 10 20 30 there was the 38 volts that we saw before and that's the current waveform so obviously this thing is just 
a real pile of turd, and that's why you get the flicker. And for those playing along at home who want to know what the uh, high frequency switching is, 62.7 kilohertz there. It's a little bit tricky to trigger on that. If we wind that out, there you go. So let's have a look at another panel that I got some time back just as a trial. It's a non-flickering series, as I said. You can't have a non-flickering panel because it's just the LEDs inside. It's all about the driver. Anyway, this is a 48 watt jobby. Crap, CRI. <laughs> but I didn't care about the CRI. But the color temperature I cared about, it's supposed to be 5500, but it wasn't. I think it was like 6700 or something. Ah, completely blue balls. And it came with yet another uh, Chinese driver, an AGT brand one, and but it's supposed to be ripple free. It's advertised as a flicker free one, and well, flicker comes from the ripple. There you go. So let's take this apart and see the uh, construction design uh, difference. So right from the get-go, you can see the difference. Well, we've got some uh, large heat sinks on here because this is a 48-watt jobby. You can also see that they haven't tried to uh, cut costs because they've got the screw terminals on either end, and they cost money. That's why they didn't have them on the other one. They were penny, pin penny pinching every cent. Look at the size of this uh, transformer. But as I said, it is a higher uh, wattage jobby, a double the power. And look, they've got three output uh, ripple caps. I think the others were 330. <laughs> Sam's on, yeah, okay, whatever. Look at the large output uh, diodes they got. But on the bottom side is where you can see, like primary side, here's our driver over here. It's very similar to before. We've got a uh, bridge rectifier and we've got the input filtering and the fuse in. And uh, we've got a smaller SO8 uh, controller, primary side. But of course, we've got a primary side switching, large switching uh, transistor because as I said, it's higher power. But the secondary side is the tell. Aha, that's actually conformal coat. Yeah, they got it on the uh, primary side as well. Looks like they haven't done the whole board. They've just almost mastered off. Nice touch, um, just to prevent moisture um, causing issues in there. So, you know, you can get moisture in these things. They're up in the roof, it heats up, cools down, all that sort of jazz. So, But we've got a secondary side uh, constant current controller here with, and of course that will be driving our uh, switching tranny down there with the heatsink, but it's basically just a bridge rectifier over to the main filter cap. Then it uses a, con a proper secondary side constant current controller. And you'll notice, just like the other one, there is actually no optocoupler feedback from the secondary back to the primary. So they're also using a winding, hence, yep, they've got the uh, two pairs on the side there. One pair will be for the switching, one pair will be for the feedback. Uh, but the difference, of course, is that the Constant current regulation is done on the secondary side, and they've got big ass filter caps. That's why this one is going to have, well, it won't be entirely ripple free, but it'll have bugger all that essentially won't flicker. Big difference. And there's probably what, double, triple the bomb cost there? That could be a Chem 2. Is there markings on there? For what type of board material? Concentration only for you? What? <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, uses a similar uh, cheap chem type uh, phenolic base material, but it looks to be a bit better than the other one. But yeah, I reckon it's probably like three times the bomb cost in that compared to the other one. I know it is higher wattage and, you know, you've got to have the metal work and the big external power transistors and stuff. But yeah, that's like, <laughs> there's a big difference. All right, so let's just measure this puppy and see what we get. I haven't touched the scope. That was the same scale as before. Big difference. So we're 50 milliamps uh, per division there. So like, it's not much. Remember, this is a, actually a 1.1 amp. So over an amp output compared to um, less than half that for the uh, previous panel. So as a percentage of the uh, total current, it's not much. Of course, this is uh, AC coupled. And you can see that there is some 100 hertz there. Of course, if you have a look at your time base, 10 milliseconds, there you go. It's 100 uh, hertz and go into the high frequency stuff we can single shot capture that there you go switching frequency 47 kilohertz but you can see that there's just a huge difference we were getting hundreds of milliamps of ripple before it's just, that's why it's flickering that's why you can see it you're not going to see it you might be able to measure a teeny tiny bit of flicker somehow if you had sensitive enough uh, stuff to measure that but yeah, basically, you're not going to see that on camera or on. it's not going to be a problem on the eye as well. 
All right, let's take a brief look at the uh, chip used on this sucker, shall we? It's not on Onbright's uh, website, but I was able to get this has got uh, yeah Onbright confidential. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Nothing Google can't find. Anyway, it tells you right here can achieve low system costs for isolated lighting by primary side control in a single stage converter. Significantly simplifies the LED lighting system design by eliminating the secondary side feedback components and the opto coupler. Penny pinch in all the way to the bank. It's got high power factor, they claim, quasi resonant operation, all sorts of stuff, fast startup, blah, blah, blah. And it's got comprehensive uh, protection as well, which it can do uh, via the feedback uh, coil on the transformer. Um, so lead short circuit protection, cycle by cycle, current limiting, building leading edge blanking, under voltage lockout, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, but it's a great chip for this low cost application. The side effect, of course, is horrible amounts of ripple. And here's the schematic, which is basically what we've got on the board here. Um, we've got our bridge rectifier on the input. We had a few more, uh, you know, a fuse and some uh, filtering stuff and things like that. And we've just got a uh, resistive uh, divider here powering the chip itself. And we've got an external uh, transistor. Was that on there? But this is interesting. Uh, we don't have a switching transistor on the board. So I... I've got to assume it's the same part. The part number's the same, but of course, but this one says it's in a SOP uh, 2236 package. Our one's not. It's in an SO8 package. So I maybe it's a slight variation on the part that actually in a bigger uh, SO package that has the built-in power transistor. So anyway, um, this is the best and only data sheet confidential one I could find. So it, we assume it's got, it must have a built-in uh, switching transistor. So, but it's basically uh, the same as this. And you can see here's our uh, feedback coil as well. They should actually show that going all the way down there like that to show that it's actually coupled. That anyway, the auxiliary winding uh, feedback and that allows uh, them to sense with all the compensation. And the output is just that. It's a single wave rectifier, a one lousy output uh, filter cap, one hung low brand and straight to the lead and uh, Bob's your uncle. Like there's, there's no secondary anything. It's, it's doing the current regulation via the feedback coil here. So yeah, it's pretty how you're doing, but it's, it's cheap and it works if you don't mind the flicker. So there you go. We might be able to improve the ripple a little bit by uh, increasing the output uh, filter capacitance here, but uh, it's pretty how you're doing. It's 100% ripple. Um, that is just, yeah, awful. No wonder it flickers like buggery. But you can't just increase the capacitance, you know, willy-nilly. You've got to make sure that the diodes are capable of it and the thermals are there and everything else. And uh, it's just, uh, no, don't hack them. Just get a one that's properly designed with secondary side, current limit, and a decent amount of filtering. And of course, it's dependent upon your, the shutter speed of your camera. It's auto, you know, it's always auto changing or whatever. You can fix it to uh, avoid these things. But even my high end uh, Sony camcorders, you can see, even with my main studio lights on, even with these uh, lights up there, I've got like uh, eight of them on, and they sort of, the light filters through and mixes with my other non-flicker lights, and you can still see a little bit of flickering and shimmering in there, so it's really annoying. So I'm either going to have to try and experiment and fix these, or just toss them in the bed. They're horrible. I don't mind the panels. The panels are okay. So there you go, let that be a lesson. Beware of these cheap ass lead drivers and make sure you get ones that specifically say flicker free or low ripple or whatever it is. Otherwise, you're most likely going to end up with the lowest common denominator like we've got here. Anyway, hope you found that useful. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below in the comments or over on the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. Hello.